Hi everyone, I'm Kate Smith and this is the sixth episode of Planned Parenthood Presents The State of Abortion. This week we're joined by Oregon Governor Kate Brown. She's been a reproductive and sexual health champion since she took office in 2015. And now, since the fall of Roe, her state has become a key place where patients in banned states have gone to seek services. And Governor, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just delighted to join you. Unfortunate circumstances, however. Yes, that is that is kind of the theme of this program, unfortunately. So, Governor Brown, when this episode goes out, one of your neighboring states, Idaho, will have one of the strictest abortion bans in the nation. So what is Oregon doing to help those patients in Idaho who no longer have access? So we fully expect women, people from Idaho, to come to Oregon. Uh, we want to make sure they can have access to the health care they need and the de- they deserve. I was very pleased uh, as Oregon's governor to sign the Reproductive Health Equity Act. It is the most progressive policy in the entire country. It enables anyone, regardless of their zip code, their immigration status, or their income to access the full complement of reproductive health services. And I'm also proud that our legislature has stepped up as well We were the first state in the country to create a reproductive access fund. My colleagues in the legislature put $15 million into that fund to ensure not only uh, women in Oregon, but women in the region could access reproductive health services, including abortion. That money has gone to a uh, nonprofit called Seeding Justice. I know in some states, particularly in Michigan, uh, there's been executive orders such that people seeking abortion services in one state can't be extradited to another where abortion is banned. Is there something like that in place in Oregon? I already have the discretion to refuse to extradite in certain circumstances, and we're certainly looking at options to strengthen those protections here in Oregon. Got it. It's kind of already in the books, but you're trying to formalize it. Absolutely. There's going to be obviously a flood of abortion patients coming into Oregon from Idaho, from other states probably as well. Um, I'm curious what your message is to those patients. What do you want them to know? I want them to know that Oregon is a safe, welcoming, and inclusive state to anyone who wants to come here seeking to access reproductive health services. What I think is really important is that we all work together. And so I am reaching out to my colleagues Um, not just on the West Coast, but for example, uh, New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. I know they have been inundated with patients from Texas. How can we support New Mexico? And then uh, as Idaho uh, moves forward with their horrible uh, uh, situation, how can we support uh, the people of Idaho? How can we work with Washington as well to make sure that those folks um, in states like Idaho can access not only abortion services, but other uh, contraceptives and other necessary reproductive health care services. We understand that you've met with representatives of the Biden administration regarding reproductive and sexual health. What are they telling you? Well, I, I was really honored to meet with the president. We have met with Secretary Becerra and uh, Jen Klein of the Gender Policy Council to talk about these issues. We provided them, frankly, with a a list of ideas. What were some of those ideas that you shared? We talked about expanding telehealth services, um, which, as you know, uh, telehealth really came uh, onto its own during the pandemic. In addition to that, we talked about how they can leverage federal dollars to ensure that people can access abortion outside of their communities, including transportation, childcare, and lodging. It is no easy feat uh, to come from Texas to Oregon, right? It's expensive. Uh, You would need at least likely one or two nights of uh, hotels. Um, If you have a child, that makes it even more challenging. But even coming from Idaho, honestly, Uh, The border is five to seven hours from the Portland metropolitan area. That's quite a long haul. Mm -hmm. And how can we make sure that these families have the support and services, wraparound services they need to be able to access this fundamental right? You're absolutely right. Having a right is one thing, but having access, that's completely different. 
Oh, absolutely. And that's why the resources are important. That's why the collaboration is really important that we all work together. You're talking about a pretty incredible level of coordination between very high offices within government, multiple governor's offices. I mean, the White House itself. Have you seen very many times where all of these offices are coming together to try to solve one issue? This feels somewhat unique. I would agree. Um, I, I, I think with the president's um, commitment uh, to ensuring access to this fundamental right and his administration, uh, you can really see that that commitment is a game changer. You also have a number of uh, governors, a number of women Democratic governors, of course, that are very passionate about this, who have either had personal experiences, family members' experiences, or frankly, like me, been on the front lines of this work. And so for all of us to work together, truly is a paradigm shift. I know you're constantly in communication with all of the abortion providers in your state, visiting them, hearing them. What are some of the things that they're telling you, especially in the wake of Roe falling? Folks sold this is that there would be a clear understanding of what was happening across the country. And nothing, absolutely nothing could be farther from the truth. Our uh, folks across the state are confused, they're concerned, they're anxious, and they're afraid, and that's here in Oregon where we have access. Um, and so I can't imagine what's happening in other states like Idaho. And um, honestly, it's so important for all of us to work together and fight like hell to ensure that this fundamental right is restored in this country. Um, that's going to be, it looks like a lifetime fight for me and uh, I know others, too, that are in this um, till the end. You mentioned chaos and confusion. Are we in a public health emergency? Oh, absolutely. And, and the harsh reality is, Kate, you cannot ban abortion. You can only ban safe abortions. And unfortunately, this burden is disproportionately borne by our women of color, our families with uh, low incomes, in our rural communities, and it's absolutely unacceptable. Governor Brown, I'm sorry we had this conversation in unfortunate circumstances, but I'm honored to have spoken with you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Um, please keep up the great work you're all doing. Thank you.